Well, if you've been trading for any length of time, you've heard about Bollinger Bands, and my guest today is John Bollinger, the inventor of those trading bands. We're going to talk to him about those, but also just trading bands in general and how you use them. So, John, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Well, trading bands in general, how do they work? Well, trading bands are, are, I think, probably one of the most misunderstood of all technical tools. People uh, think that they give uh, absolute kind of buy and sell signals. That if you tag a trading band, it's automatically a sell signal. If you tag a uh, band high or tag a band low, what trading bands really do um, is they don't generate signals in and of themselves. They give you some information. They answer a question. And that question is whether prices are high or low on a relative basis. So by definition, prices are high at the upper band. By definition, prices are low at the lower band. And it turns out that those defini definitions are really useful definitions, that we can use them to build rigorous trading approaches. Um, so I think um, people expect a little bit too much from trading bands um, just uh, by themselves. Um, and that what they need to do is, is kind of accept a, a simpler uh, idea of what trading bands are about and then use that information that, that they generate to build rigorous trading approaches. So if you've got Bollinger Bands or any trading bands on different time frames, do you want some confluence? Do you want to, to reach an upper high on a daily chart and then maybe if you're a short-term trader on the 15-minute chart as well? Well, that's a really interesting question. There was a guy by the name of Sam Cashigan. He wrote a, um, he wrote a number of um, very interesting statistics books, I mean, literally college-level um, statistics texts. But his real passion was the markets. And um, a very, very long time ago, he designed a system called the Lennox system. It hasn't been around for uh, forever. But he required the same patterns to occur in three different time frames in order to get a signal. And he had a very specific sort of sort of pattern that the, was built out of it, and when it, when that pattern occurred in the three time frames, that confluence would would give you the signal. He was very early on. You know, this was before people really understood about the f things about the fractal nature of markets and such. So he was he was kind of a pioneering system. Um, and we, we find that, that with Bollinger Bands, it, it's quite often um, the same. There are two ideas that seem very interesting. Number one um, is if you just combine different kinds of Bollinger Bands on the same chart, you get very interesting, interesting information. For example, if you combine 20-period Bollinger Bands and 50-period Bollinger Bands, right, you find that, that at certain points they line up, they, they, they come together, and they give you useful trading information. Another sort of thing um, is if you're, if you're um, mindful of the sorts of tasks that traders assign to different time frames, you can use Bollinger Bands in, in different time frames. For example, we have uh, typically short time, short term, intermediate term, and long term. Uh, in sh intermediate term is the time frame which you do your primary analysis. Um, it's the time frame which you make your buy and sell decisions and monitor your positions. Short term is used exclusively for executions, for getting the proper fills, um, for setting your stops, and, and such like that. Long term is used for background information, for uh, um, providing environmental information. So you might use, um, in the intermediate term, you might use 20 period Bollinger Bands uh, on a daily chart to arrive at a buy or sell signal. In the long term, you might use 20 period Bollinger Bands on a weekly chart and only accept the buy signal from the intermediate term if you had had a similar buy signal from the long term. So you could use the environmental information as a filter to guide your intermediate term operations. John, thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. You're watching the moneyshow.com video network.